This vice presidential debate is the most entertaining thing I have ever seen. Not only is J.D. Vance absolutely destroying Tim Walls, but, like, there's no coherent sentences that are coming out of, like, Tim Walls' mouth. Like, everything he says, I feel like he's just, like, um, stuttering. He looks scared. He looks nervous. Does not look put together. Is not having very many statistics or facts to spit back. And it's just, like, so hilarious watching. Like, I do not know how any American with, like, an ounce of common sense who's voting in this next election could actually be confident confident in a Kamala Walls presidency and vice presidency. Like, I genuinely am concerned for people who are voting for them because, like, why? It's pretty clear uh, Vance outclassed Walls tonight. I mean, I was watching this and all I could think of was, man, Walls is so in over his head. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine this guy sitting in the White House Situation Room with that facial expression that's like 50% sheer terror and 50% extreme bafflement. I mean, it was amazing. The split screen difference between a competent Vance and a totally in over his head walls. The answer on why he lied about his trips to China and the Tiananmen Square thing was probably the worst VP debate meltdown since Stockdale in 92. You know, who am I and why am I here? It was two and a half minutes of absolute terrible. For Vance, night of redemption, all the political media has told us that Vance was a terrible pick and Walls was going to bring in all these voters. That charade is now over. Walls does not belong at this level of American politics. Vance does. Final verdict, Tim Walls wandered into the wrong bar tonight. I think we shouldn't lose track, I think even in the civility, of the fact that J.D. Vance came to this debate to land a bunch of punches, and he did. He landed a lot of punches in between all the niceties and all, and all of that. And, and the thing that, that really stood out to me was that Tim Walls did not seem prepared for it. I think actually it's the opposite. I think he had too much preparation. Maybe, yeah. He had so many lines that he was clearly trying to say yeah. that he didn't listen and said when, when uh, J.D. Vance said one of the many, many things he um, really hit Kamala Harris on, not Tim Walls, but Kamala Harris, he didn't respond because he clearly had things in his mind. I think the lack of interviews that he has done with national media, with local media, it showed. He needed more reps. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, uh, J.D. Vance is uh, much more uh, experienced at this, at public speaking, at defending himself. When the hardcore liberals are starting to agree with you, then you know it's over. They can't push for a narrative that Waltz won because J.D. Vance dominated this debate. And the truth is, they know that their boy got cooked. He got roasted. He was so distraught that he had to go out and get pizza right after it. And guys, I just want to thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for hitting the like button and subscribing. Thank you for joining us over in our community over on Patreon. I left a link for you guys down below if you want to join our Patreon community. Let's get started. As DC people, we know what it's like to try to get a slice of pizza in town. New York City pizza, <laughs> nothing like it. He is at New York Pizza getting a late night snack and an off the record capacity. Let me, uh, what they call an OTR stop, I should say. Let me listen in real quick and see if we can hear. Yeah. All right, so he's picking out a slice. We've got the audio up here, just in case he takes any questions. Does he cut it with him. a fork and knife? That can be a politically <laughs> advantageous or, uh, or problematic Ooh, decision. Ooh, that's a deep pull, Peter, for the, for the younger folks watching. The amount of copium in NBC right now is overflowing because this guy just got smashed in a vice presidential debate and they had nothing to work with other than talk about him getting pizza in New York. That's how bad it was for NBC. Although Tim Waltz, he did take questions from the press there all until they asked about his comments on a school shooter. Governor, what do you think your strongest moment was tonight? Oh, just, uh, I think it was a good debate. The public got to see a contrast. Uh, and I think the ending uh, sums it up. The democracy issues important. Governor, you said you'd become friends with school shooters during the debate. Can you clarify what you meant on that? Can you clarify what you meant when you said you'd be friends with school shooters? Why did you say you were in Hong Kong when, when reports say you weren't? Would you all be willing to talk a little bit more about your religion? We're Lutherans. We don't talk about religion. Now you gotta love the energy on that girl who repeated the same question in a much louder voice. And this was one of the botches that Tim Waltz had at the debate, which really didn't help his case because J.D. Vance was hitting home runs left and right. He was landing haymakers and Waltz's face looked like this. The reason why mainstream liberal media can't defend him is because 
This was a very one-sided fight, and now they have no choice but to turn on the governor. It was also very clear that J.D. Vance was extremely prepared. He was even predicting what Tim Waltz would say even before he said it. Actively disarming any Tim Waltz attack had memorized prior to the debate. And if you guys watched it, you would have seen how Governor Waltz repeatedly looked down on his notes and then looked back at J.D. Vance. He was basically lost out there. Well, first of all, you're going to hear a lot from Tim Walz this evening, and you just heard it in the answer. A lot of what Kamala Harris proposes to do, and some of it, I'll be honest with you, it even sounds pretty good. Here's what you won't hear, is that Kamala Harris has already done it because she's been the vice president for three and a half years. She had the opportunity to enact all of these great policies. And what she's actually done instead is drive the cost of food higher by 25 percent, drive the cost of housing higher by about 60 percent, open the American southern border and make middle class life unaffordable for a large number of Americans. If Kamala Harris has such great plans for how to address middle class problems, then she ought to do them now, not when asking for a promotion, but in the job the American people gave her three and a half years ago. And the fact that she isn't tells you a lot about how much you can trust her actual plans. And this has been the point of attack for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, one that many find to be effective because it's based on what Americans are feeling right now. Comparing both terms, this would give voters an easy choice. Life was much better under Donald Trump, which led to this knockout blow where you can see Tim Waltz agreeing with J.D. Vance. It's a rare sight, but look at his eyes as he listens to the senator. Honestly, Tim, I, I think you got a tough job here because you've got to play whack-a-mole. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver rising take-home pay, which of course he did. You've got to pretend that Donald Trump didn't deliver lower inflation, which of course he did. And then you simultaneously got to defend Kamala Harris's atrocious economic record, which has made gas, groceries and housing unaffordable for American citizens. I was raised by a woman who would sometimes go into medical debt so that she could put food on the table in our household. I know what it's like to not be able to afford the things that you need to afford. We can do so much better to all of you watching. We can get back to an America that's affordable again. We just got to get back to common sense economic principles. Now, just to add to this, J.D. Vance has been doing media questions for a long time as he was nominated as VP for Donald Trump. They put him in position and he hit the ground running. There was no point where he was flustered because he's been sparring this entire time. And even CNN believes that this was the big mistake for Tim Waltz. He he hasn't done any tough interviews since being handpicked by Kamala Harris. He was never in a spot where opposition was in his face and he had an answer. Basically, he's never had a fight in his life. I mean, that's what they get for hiding their candidate for so long. But what do you guys think about this? Did JD Vance win this one by a landslide? Or did Tim Waltz take it? And since we talked about it a lot, we know that the top Democrats want us to forget about these past four years. Surprisingly though, MSNBC did an interview with Kamala Harris that goes back to what really happened under their term. I read a book a long time ago and it basically said something that was really powerful and profound to me. And it said something along the lines of, look at your five closest friends and typically your income is an average of your five closest friends. Now, with that being said, I was kind of like thinking, okay, well, how do I find people who made way more than me so I could increase my chances of having a higher income? I mean, it only made sense, right? For less than a cup of coffee a day, for less than a dollar a day, join a powerful network of people who are ready to change their lives for the better. And I will be putting a limit on this group, so get in while you can. Be positively motivated by other others who are also on the same pursuit. So I'm going to leave a link for you guys so you can join me over on the Life Pursuit Network in the description down below this video. So check it out, guys, and let's not be a victim of this great wealth transfer that is taking place right now. Anyway, what this means is that this was a very good opportunity for Donald Trump to show voters what he's all about. And I think it's very clear that he was there for the people. Now, before leaving, the former president was seen giving out food to supporters who were also chanting USA at him. A chant that changed to four more years as he passed out even more food to supporters who wanted to shake his hand. He even took the time to talk to a few people as Secret Service was obviously sweating as he got closer and closer to fans. Now this is the type of interaction with people that's hard to fake. I mean, you can see it in their faces. They were happy to see him attending this game. This is kind of different compared to what Governor Tim Waltz is experiencing. The VP nominee for the Democratic Party also decided to attend a football game recently. This one being the Michigan-Minnesota game, and here's what happened.
It's said that chants of Tampon Tim even broke out from the crowd as they're pissed off about his appearance. The reason as to why people were left waiting outside is because Waltz's motorcade forced them to wait as he arrived at the game. University of Michigan fans were also told to stand under the rain for more than 30 minutes before they were even allowed inside the venue. But it wasn't all bad news for Tim Waltz since he was also being reported that he had supporters there as well. Now the only difference between Donald Trump and Tim Waltz is that these supporters were bussed in and they were holding signs for both Waltz and Vice President Kamala Harris. Which goes to show that their campaign is relying heavily on supporters who are willing to go with them wherever they go. And to be honest guys, this is kind of sad given that they've been flaunting to have so much support from the American people. And this now brings me to the last resort of the Kamala Harris Waltz campaign. They're once again trying to bait Donald Trump into another rigged debate. Now, if you can't win 3v1 debates where moderators are essentially carrying the water for you, it might be time to give up. But as we know, they're not going to give up anytime soon since they do have money to burn. In fact, they literally ran an ad that called Donald Trump out during the game that he attended. Vice President Harris is now pushing former President Trump for another debate. Yeah, good evening to you, Nancy. Former President Trump is attending an SEC rematch tonight between Alabama and Georgia, but the Harris campaign is challenging the former president to a debate rematch with a new ad and a banner that's set to air above the stadium here, claiming that he's hunting on a second debate. Tailgating in Tuscaloosa. Oh! Football faithful sported Alabama Crimson and Georgia Bulldog Red, ready for the primetime game and former President Donald Trump. I think he's great. I think he's fantastic. I think the country needs him. It's a good thing. Um, I just hope he's, you know, he's safe. But the former president was also greeted by this new ad from Vice President Kamala Harris. Champions know it's any time, any place. But losers, they whine and waffle. Egging Trump on for another debate. If you got something to say, say it to my face. The former president in Wisconsin earlier ignored the latest challenge, but continued to hammer Harris on immigration after her trip to the southern border in Arizona Friday. Kamala Harris can never be forgiven for her erasing our border. And she must never be allowed to become president of the United States. The Harris campaign initially wanted to hire a plane with a banner that would fly over the Bryant Denny Stadium. It was set to have the message Trump's punting on second debate. Now you gotta wonder guys, Israel's already in a war with Hamas. Why start a new one and engage in a war on two fronts? Unless someone told them to. Maybe someone in the White House who needed a distraction threatened Netanyahu that if he doesn't do this, they're gonna go ahead and pull US funding from Israel. Just something to think about you guys, you know what I'm saying? Now I doubt that they're going to be putting American soldiers anywhere near this mess, especially now with the US participation in foreign matters being such a hot button issue in the elections. You know what I mean? Plus, we don't need our soldiers back Back home here in America to go after the drug cartels and gangs that have taken over their cities. We should definitely protect and defend America first. Now, starting with our own former president, Donald Trump, don't believe what the mainstream media and Secret Service are saying. Our former commander in chief is still in danger. As long as he's going up against the current administration, we have to keep an eye on him. There have already been two assassination attempts, technically maybe three or four, if you count all of these little odd incidents, but there have been two assassination attempts on Donald Trump's life. And with this race in his favor, 
I doubt that this will be the last. In fact, far-right representative Matt Gates he recently claimed that at least five known assassin teams are hunting former President Donald Trump. According to Gates' statement posted on his congressional website, we do not have enough force protection to support President Trump that we ought to have, given the threat environment. The congressman cited the times when resources have been pulled off the Trump detail for the Jill Biden detail or for the John Bolton detail. So he said that they're going to question whether or not that was sound, given what they knew about the efforts to kill Trump. Now, this next part is where it gets really hair raising, guys. So Matt Gates he claimed to have obtained the knowledge of the Trump assassination teams from a senior Department of Homeland Security official. He said two of the teams are domestic, but three are operated internationally. He mentioned Iranians, Ukraine, and Pakistan, and that he believes there is insufficient scrutiny to stop the assassination teams from operating out in the open. I mean, just look at the second mess up that they did with Trump gunman Ryan Ruth. Prosecutors say that Ruth was in the area of Trump's golf course and the former president's Mar-a-Lago residence across multiple days in the month before that he was arrested and had a Google search of how to travel from Florida to Mexico in one of his phones. You know what else he had? He had handwritten dates and venues where Donald Trump has or was expected to appear in the lead up to the 2024 presidential election. Now, the question is, how in the heck did he get this schedule, guys? Now, let me tell you, the rabbit hole just goes on and on and on. Prosecutors wrote that Ruth had traveled to West Palm Beach from North Carolina on August 14th. Cell phone records show him near Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence and the golf course multiple days and times between August 18th and September 15th, the day that he was arrested. While searching Ruth's car, agents found six cell phones, one of which included a Google search for how to travel from Palm Beach County to Mexico. The agents also found 12 pairs of gloves, a Hawaii driver's license in the defendant's name, passport in the defendant's name. And did you guys see where this guy's been? His recent background included a stint in the Ukraine where he failed getting recruited to fight Russia. One of the people that met him there was that nurse in the video that described him as a ticking time bomb. He taught uh, uh, in China uh, from 89 to 90. Uh, he visited the country 30 times. He got married on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. Um, he honeymooned in China. And to your point, he promoted Chinese communism as a teacher to his American students. So I think mm -hmm. what this does, Governor, is it begs the question, is Tim Walls a national security risk? Absolutely. I'm 100 percent convinced he's a national security risk. Uh, this man wants America to grow up and be more like China, which is the exact opposite of what our leaders should be doing. I have spent all of my time fighting China. And for 30 years, I've been working in policy right. on protecting our food supply. And we've seen China not only manipulate our currency, steal our IP, treat us unfairly in trade agreements. They've also spied on us. They've come in and now and they're taking and buying our land. I have banned them purchasing land and doing state contracts in South Dakota. The rest of the country needs to realize and wake up that we do not want a leader like Tim Walls and Kamala Harris in the White House because of how they would undermine our national security. It's a big concern, and I hope we start talking about it a little bit more, that you have to have people in the White House that truly want to protect us, protect our republic, and fight socialism, fight Marxism, fight communism. That's not Tim Walls. You're not going to want to miss how Kamala Harris responded to this, so make sure you guys watch one of my previous videos where I go over all the details. Now, as always, appreciate you guys hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. We'll see you guys next time.